sometimes even in the Air Force circles, <coughs> is the role played by unheralded aviation athletes. Today, we'll stick to two, Howard and Vampire. Howard, a trainer aircraft, and uh, Vampire, also a trainer at that point of time. So, uh, the second half of the, the, the coordinator will announce would be the impact of air dominance in the east. And that would be a discussion with the Air Marshal Anish Masad in the eastern part. But first, Harvards and Vampires. Uh, to discuss this, we have Mr. Jagan Mohan. And most of you know Jagan, a historian par excellence, three books on the Indian Air Force, several other projects, editor of Bharat Rakshak, which in a way is a de facto official website, if I may say so, of the three services, certainly of the Air Force. Uh, he uh, got the chief of, he was awarded the chief of air staff's commendation in 2007, a fellowship from the USI to write a book, and the famous book of his, Eagles over Bangladesh. Uh, but before I get uh, Jagan on, uh, Jagan, welcome, I can see you on the screen. Uh, let me first show you two slides of Howard, just to depict exactly who all were there. So we had the Air Force formed an ad hoc squadron, one, two, three ad hoc squadron, which operated from Sirsa and Rajori. All of you know where Rajori is. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. And this was the group of people led by a group captain, group captain Ware who rose uh, to Air Commodore and retired, and his son is uh, Group Captain Charles Ware, uh, privileged to be his course mate, uh, my course mate. I am privileged to be his course mate. And these are the pioneers of Harvard operations. Uh, A.M. Oza, Rupi Ware, K.B. Singh, Raja Suri, and Barbara. I had a long chat with uh, Raja Suri, and I said, sir, please send me some photographs. Uh, he said, I have no photographs, actually. But I, to keep my memories alive, next slide, please. He said, I did this painting. Next slide. He said, this is what I remember. And this is what I painted on acrylic. Uh, Howard's, and that's the Rajori ALG. So, uh, so next slide, please. Uh, the blank slide. So, let, uh, after this, let's talk now to Jagan. Uh, Jagan, uh, please throw some light on how the Howard winner came into the contention well, uh, uh, first, uh, thank you very much for this welcome, uh, uh, Avian Basel, sir. Uh, it's my privilege to be uh, talking about these unheralded squadrons of the IAF in the 71 Ops. Um, so, I know a lot of our uh, a lot of our uh, uh, audience are already aware of the 1971 war air operations. They pretty much know the the uh, headline grabbing air battles and the glamorous uh, 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 sort is stories of those operations already. And most of these are with the frontline combat uh, aircraft like the MiG-21, Sukhoi-7s, Canberra's, Hunters, etc. The Howards and the Vampires, which we are going to talk about later, are from the not so glamorous second line aircraft that were being used as trainers at that time. The Howard in particular, was a second world war, uh, world war II era uh, piston engined uh, aircraft uh, powered by a, a Pratt and, Pratt and Whitney uh, Wasp radial engine. Um, the one that we are talking about that were used in 71 were what the AF acquired in the early 50s, but they really date back to the uh, second world war. They, at that time, they were being used as advanced trainers uh, with the Air Force Academy as well as, you know, uh, the flying uh, instructor school and uh, what the Indian Air Force decided is they had very well laid out plans to, uh, for the frontline squadrons attacking, uh, you know, providing close air support, air bases, uh, strategic targets, etc. But what they felt was a gap in providing close air support in mountainous regions. For example, in the, in the Kashmir Valley's uh, sector, the high speed jets cannot effectively operate at low level, cannot provide accurate and uh, effective close air support. So the thought came out within Western Air Command, can we make use of uh, slower aircraft? And uh, at that time in their arsenal were the Howard trainers and the uh, Vampire fighters, which we'll uh, 
uh, speak uh, later on. So as uh, uh, squadron leader Captain Suri to had a later captain in the Air India has you know, uh, Raja Suri told us, the the Howards were taken to Hindon and the uh, the uh, the engineers had worked on what we call, you know, we, we are very favorite of this word uh, called Jugar. The Howards originally were unarmed. The version that we operated could not deliver ordnance. So they rigged up uh, they rigged up electricals uh, using spare parts from the hunter squadrons, and uh, they were able to equip uh, the hover to carry at least six of the T10 uh, rockets, three under the each wing. And using the hunter uh, electrical box installed in the cockpit, they, uh, the pilots would have been able to operate uh, the rockets, you know, one pair at a time. And all this was done in the in the weeks leading up to the operations. You know, the first two weeks leading up to the operations. Yeah, Jagan. So. Uh... These lots of T-10 rockets was done, and uh, I was speaking to uh, somebody who was there at that point of time. And the point was that actually, when they put the avionics on, uh, the compass would just drift off by 30 degrees. You know, so this was the jugad, as uh, Jagan said, uh, they were there. Uh, but what were the, the roles assigned, uh, Jagan, to to the Texans operating from uh, from Rajari? So, the the. Initially, the Texans were sent to provide close air support uh, uh, to the uh, 25th uh, Mount, Mountain Division, I believe, the Ace of Spades Division under General Kundan Singh. Uh, the, there was a concern that the, uh, the Pakistanis will try the same uh, infiltration tactics uh, from 1965 in, by sending in uh, 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 you know, uh, irregular militia as well as uh, uh, arms and equipment to create uh, chaos behind Indian lines. So the Howards were tasked at uh, undertaking recce sorties, disrupting the uh, supply lines, uh, and uh, and uh, also in attacking pillboxes and other installations in, in, in support of that particular division in that uh, specific area. Parallelly, a couple of Howards were also sent south to Sirsa to, to see if uh, they can be utilized in undertaking nighttime uh, Ricky and uh, interdiction sorties, but as you mentioned, there were challenges using the compass, uh, and uh, nighttime navigation uh, wasn't uh, wasn't easy in in the you know in in, in those circumstances. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, uh, one of the ways that uh, uh, the the pilots they realized that when they were flying uh, in the hills of Rajori and st uh, striking, strafing the Pakistani posts out there. All the ACAC was coming and uh, bursting in ahead of the aircraft because, and then they realized that those guys were trained for the high speed of fighter aircraft, whereas the Texan was a trainer. So the lead-in that was required to intercept the aircraft, uh, they, you lead ahead and you fire, was, uh, should have been lesser for the slow moving uh, this particular aircraft. That was there, the, the Texan. So there were these intrepid pilots, seven of them, who operated uh, the Texans out there. Now, due to shortage of time, I think we need to uh, move from the Texan uh, to a different aircraft. Absolutely, uh, the, the first jet, actually, who, which came into the Indian Air Force. And uh, let's switch to vampires, uh, Jagan. Uh, uh, just a few slides of that. Okay, this was another ad hoc squad, and this was formed uh, at two places, Halwara and Srinagar. Uh, the vampires, they were pulled out, and um, uh, some very minor modifications done. But this is a shot of the vampire in Srinagar, a trainer aircraft. Next slide. Uh, that's uh, the... The commanding officer of the squadron, a flight lieutenant, flight lieutenant Manjit Singh Sehwa, now an MR, retired as an air marshal, and he's addressing his uh, his uh, airmen out there in Srinagar. Next slide, please. This is the vampire that was taken from Hakimpet fighter training wing and was operating from Halwara. And when it landed back there, this was the graffiti. Uh, on the on the vampire, wing commander Marshall uh, was the was heading that detachment at Halwara. 
So uh, this is what a vampire never, the aircraft could never have thought that it would get this sort of a paint scheme. Uh, next slide. Please. Okay. Uh, no, that's all. Thank you. Okay, Jagan, let's speak to the vampires, which got moved to Halwara and uh, Srinagar. Now, what role did they perform? Because we know the problems with the vampire, slow-moving jet, and in the 65 war, if you recollect, uh, we lost uh, three vampires and chum in the very first strike when they were taken off from Patanko. They stopped. The, they gave the time required to the army, of course, but we had lost three or I think it was four vampires. So, Jagan, over to you. Uh, what roles were given to them, knowing the history, uh, but they were repositioned as Srinagar? Yeah, as, as as you mentioned, uh, the vampires were no longer serving with any of the any of the uh, flying squadrons of the air force at that time. Uh, they were only uh, equipping the fighter training wing in Hakimpet just to provide introductory jet training to the uh, pilots uh, coming out of the AFA. And the role was sort of uh, similar to what was uh, designed for the Howard. Uh, the uh, Pakistani positions in the high high mountain ranges in the Kargil. Srinagar and Poonch area. That was the original uh, uh, task. When the air, aircraft were sent, they were split into two detachments. Uh, one detachment was the single seaters that went to Srinagar. The other detachment, as you mentioned, where, where went to Halwara, which were the two seaters. The the reason uh, this, this was uh, split was uh, they decided that uh, uh, facing all these aircraft at Srinagar was a risk and uh, they diverted the two seaters to undertake night interdiction missions over Pakistan. Uh, as you mentioned, the single seater detachment under uh, then Flight Lieutenant Manjit Singh Sekhon uh, was able to carry out several uh, strikes against the Pakistani army formations, took active participation in the Kargil sector, including retaking of several mountain peaks, uh, which helped the Indian Army uh, retake several mountain peaks back into our control. Um, and the detachment at Halwara, which was again led by Wing Commander Marshall, focused mostly on uh, nighttime interdiction against uh, uh, railway marshalling yards as well as uh, as well as uh, the Grand Trunk Road, the uh, targets along the Grand Trunk Roads. Um, the because for nighttime operation, they needed a crew of two members, one one crew member to navigate using the clock and the map the other one to fly and uh, there are a lot of stories as to how they identify targets in the dark moonlight uh, and by just by uh, dr navigation uh, techniques that on the other side they were thinking they were being held by intelligence on the ground sub observators on the ground so the accuracy with which they delivered these strikes is, is is a whole story altogether yeah the the, the vampires operating from halwara their navigation at night was just compass and the clock. Uh, why they were sent at night was basically because they had no protection. That's number one, slow speed. And any railway station or a railway line is visible even in the darkest of nights. So they were given this task basically to strike Marshall Indians. Whereas the aircraft at Halwara, uh, at uh, Srinagar, uh, they did a yeoman service in the, in the hills, right? Actually, they went into Rajauri also, up to Gurej, all those hills. And uh, special mention is of that point 13620, uh, right above Kargil, which we got, and, the, and almost 30 odd posts which the army took uh, along the Batalik Valley and uh, up north further. The vampires were there in full strength. Uh, I had the good fortune of speaking with one of the pilots uh, that time, Flight Lieutenant Quatra. He's in Mao now. And, I, and uh, he spoke about this and he said that um, when we went in for strikes at, uh, in all these areas, uh, it was a lot of ingenuity on, on, on the part of the pilots that was there. So uh, with these Canberra, uh, with these uh, vampires out there and not a single loss, that's the important part. Despite um, the antiquity of the aircraft, I think only one aircraft got hit. Uh, there were a lot of wheel chakras that were given, Flight Lieutenant Sekho, Flight Lieutenant Quatra, 
and one more officer, uh, they got uh, Veer Chakra and a mention in dispatch. So uh, this is what was done. Uh, and since we have a little time, uh, Jagan, let's speak a bit about the AN-12 bombing. Uh, the AN-12, we all know, was a transport aircraft. That time, our heavy lift. Uh, that was used in the bombing role. A few words on the uh, on the AN-12, Jagan. Yes, sir. So, I, one word I would like to add is that all the officers and the airmen who accompanied these ad hoc squadrons we are talking about were volunteers. Yes. They, 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 they were. They could have you know, some of them actually left as jobs or you know staff jobs and say, I want to fly, and you know, they went out of their way to seek action. We should call that out. Um, uh, coming to the AN-12s, uh, AN-12s, as folks, people would probably know, is was our uh, was primarily a transport aircraft, and uh, they, we had two squadrons, number 44 and number 25, uh, leading up to the 71 war. Again, in the in the grand scheme of things, when the plans were drawn, a decision was taken to use the AN-12s as carpet bombers. And that point of time, the commanding officer, under the leadership of Wing Commander Wasist. AP versus later AVM. This squadron was able to carry out multiple nighttime uh, uh, nighttime carpet bombing strikes against various strategic targets. That literally kept pressure on the Pakistani army, both in the east as well as in the west. Um, again, several several missions uh, ranging from Rajasthan all the way up to Skardu airfield will take a completely new session for us to discuss that in detail. Uh, just uh, got a Mahavir Chakra for that, for, for those missions out there, besides a few more of uh, those pilots. And what Jagant spoke about the volunteering part, uh, the Texan, uh, Group Captain Bertie Ware, he was actually a group captain at that point of time, working in air headquarters, and he volunteered to go and, as part, to lead those Texans, the Howard the trainers. And so was the case with many of these pilots. Uh, for example, Flight Lieutenant Quatra was in Hakempet, and he volunteered to go there. Uh, so, in clo closing, uh, with respect to these antique uh, aircraft that were used, uh, all I'll say is that ingenuity was the hallmark of all those operations. Ingenuity, you can call it jugaad, but I think let's use a better word, and which is ingenuity, which is which was there. Uh, An-12s we've spoken of, and caribou was used in the bombing role in the east also. Uh, it showed the guts of the pilots in taking on the roles that required improvisation and were downright risky. There are no two ways about it. You can't use any other word. And the ability of the technical staff, let's not forget them, the men behind the machines, who worked day in and day out to make sure that those machines were airworthy, had been modified to help the pilots do the mission. Uh, thank you very much, Jagan. Uh, it's more than midnight out there in the US, I know. Uh, you have indeed educated us and the audience. To you and have a good night's sleep. Thank you. We'll now switch to the east. Uh, and let's discuss the impact of air dominance in the east. 